Hello, I'm Ray L. C. from the City University of Hong Kong, speaking on behalf of Maurice Benayong and Permanius Lindbergh, as well as the members of the New Design Lab and the Studio for Narrative Spaces here at the School of Creative Media. I will present our work called Power Chess. So this is a work actually sponsored by Foucault, um, as also was presented at Ars Electronica and um, and other places as well. And this is a collaboration with the New Design Lab as well as the Studio for Narrative Spaces and also the Sound Lab at City U. Um, so what we started with in this project is the idea that the machine is a work of art, is an art subject. And we wanted to actually look at how humans actually interpret uh, these machine actions as well. So this is what the uh, work actually looks like. So we have a couple of uh, arms, uh, robotic arms, that's uh, playing chess uh, uh, on this game board. And we have uh, uh, speakers which actually uh, procedurally generate sound when the, the uh, machine actually uh, interacts with the ch chess board. Um, so what this is, is that the, the chess game itself becomes a model of the social conflict. So for example, we actually have different rule sets so that the robot actually take different actions uh, depending on what the rules are. And this, uh, these rule sets actually tell the story of uh, what is happening uh, kind of in a global scale. So the world uh, sort of a battle is enacted in these chess pieces. And we use this model to basically understand how people interpret both the robotic arms and the actual uh, things that are happening on the chessboard as well. Um, so I will show you a brief movie of what our artwork actually looks like. Um, as you can see, um, we will um, have these uh, robotic arms actually make the moves and then they will press the clock uh, to uh, signal that they finish uh, doing that particular move. And as you see this uh, started to happen, um, the chessboard gets more and more complicated uh, because uh, for a particular rule set, uh, action is actually happening. So there's a chess engine in the background that's running. Um, and it's, these robots actually also give interesting gestures and emotional type of representation. And you can see actually it breathes as well. And so that's showing us kind of this flavor of what a sentient which are playing actually have their own understanding and also they interact with the audience, they look at the audience, um, they uh, signal to each other. For example, if somebody makes a really uh, you know, smart move or a really dumb move, the other robot would kind of like laugh and like look closer. It's like, oh, what's going on? Um, so for example, here are some uh, different uh, gestures that could be made. So for this one is the hesitation up here. So the robot's kind of like, oh, I'm not sure about this. You know, and then the next gesture here is like standing up alert, you know, when something weird is happening in the audience, for example. And what you can see uh, here is our audience evaluation. So basically we gave uh, over 30 um, uh, surveys to uh, over 30 people and to understand how they uh, will interpret these different types of actions after watching the video. So basically what's happening is that um, this graph, what it's showing is how the audience is interpreting each of these gestures in, in the dimensions of how friendly they are, how expressive they are, etc. So these are all the different gestures that we were considering, uh, which is a subset of the ones that went into the actual uh, uh, artwork itself. So by the way, these are two other types of gestures. So for example, this one is like staring at the other opponent because it's like wondering what's going on. This one is like standing up really strong and being alert, right? So uh, for example, here are, are some of the things that you can see from this. So for example, the head turn when it's the robot's going like this, it's very scored as really very highly curious, right? Makes sense because that's kind of a curious gesture. And also, for example, if you stand up, like as alert, that becomes very aggressive, right? And it's not friendly, right? As you can see um, in the red, red means it's very low, green means it's really high. Um, and similarly, uh, deliberation, uh, the deliberation gestures thought of as really thoughtful, etc., etc. So why do we do this? We wanted to actually verify that people are actually able to interpret uh, the machine gestures as uh, actually having these properties of friendliness, expressivity, decisiveness, etc. 
Now, that's only part of the story because the next part is actually the more interesting, uh, which is less touched upon by uh, HAI, re HAI researchers. And it's the question of like, how do we interpret robot-robot interactions? So how do humans interpret that? So what you're going to see here on the right is actually uh, a different survey where we gave people um, basically videos of uh, the uh, one uh, play situation. So it's kind of a longer play situation. So unlike the previous one, which is you know, like an individual vignette. So this is actually a long play situation and they can see the whole game evolving over a, sh a short amount of time. Um, but in this case, the right robot is very aggressive, both in its moves and in its gestures. So it's like making these like alert and aggressive type gestures. And then the left robot is a lot more subdued and passive, right? So first of all, the first thing you can see is that um, according to the human ratings, you can they can actually see this as well, right? So right to left means like how they're interpreting the right robot acting towards the left robot, and as you can see that that's rated as very highly aggressive as it should be. And similarly, um, the left robot acting towards the right is a lot more casual, right? It's a lot, a lot more like defensive, as you can see here, right? So. By the way, the quotes coming from this is also really interesting. So they people are understanding this very well. So they said, "Oh, the right robot is playing aggressively. Left robot is unsure." The over they also we asked them to kind of tell a story about the situation. They will say things like, "The overly confident left robot meets the silent killer right robot," for example. Two lover robots love to engage with each other uh, competitively and playfully, right? So they love to kind of have this story and interpretation of what this is. And this actually brings us back to the point of the game, really, which serves as sort of a storyboard and as a chessboard for uh, these two characters that's acting, right? So that's interesting. People can interpret robot-robot uh, interaction, but what about their intended strategy how against particular robots. So for example, uh, what if we're asking how the humans would react towards the left or the right robot in terms of the way they would actually play? So we asked this as well. So for example, you saw the right robot, you saw the left robot. How would you intend to strategize towards the right robot, for example, right? So as you can see, it's very interesting, right? So for example, uh, towards the left robot, which is much more kind of passive, uh, the human participants are, would react to be much more aggressive, for example. And then towards the right robot, they would actually um, act as more defensive, presumably because the right robot is too you know, aggressive, so they want to be like very careful against the right robot for example. So they actually change their strategy of play against the robot based on the gestures that the robots make. That's a very interesting new finding because it suggests that actually we can actually not only interpret the robot-robot interaction uh, in this particular format game, but we can actually change our intended actions based on um, that interpretation. So more quotes that you can see, um, for example, uh, I would be very aggressive, uh, but I would first let the right robot think that I was being casual and friendly, right? So people actually come up with these really interesting strategies. The left robot seems to be watching moves played by the right robot and then reacting accordingly, etc. And of course, there's always the existential one. The two robots are playing chess, but they aren't really getting anywhere. Right? So the last thing that we want to say also is the interpretation of the robot as an arm uh, with, you know, of a body versus the hand uh, versus the head. So, so in other words, um, they can either interpret the robot as uh, a hand, uh, which case is part of an arm, or they can interpret it as a head, which is part of a body. And what you can see is that we can actually ask people to interpret for a particular video whether the robot would be likely to do one of the following, right? So for example, not easy incoming visitors depending on the right viral terminal, that is a head interpretation. Uh, as a hand uh, interpretation, catching a fish by scooping it out of the water, they're more likely, they would interpret that as a hand interpretation of the robot. And as you can see in the video itself, people are more likely to interpret the robot as a head, right? So meaning that they're, it's more of a character base as opposed to this, these things are grabbing and moving things around. So they're interpreting the robot as a character, as a head. Um, and the one on the right actually shows that there's a dichotomy between basically interpreting either as head or head or hand, but nothing in between, and etc. for the for the arm and the body. So 
This gives us a way to tell the story of the machine and the game they play. So for example, we can actually have different rule sets, we, uh, something like power versus number, in which you have different number of pieces in the chessboard, but some of them are all pa pawns as opposed to the other side being more powerful. You can also do interesting uh, rule sets just like uh, gender equality, in which the king has the power as, as the queen. And so basically this allows us to actually um, tell the story of the conflict and the characters that's playing in it, being the robot, using the games that they actually play. And to actually evaluate how humans, uh, how, uh, humans uh, interpret that situation and therefore be able to, you know, in a position to see how they would intend to play in, in a particular position. So that's, I believe, a really uh, powerful strategy. And so we want to thank uh, all the folks who are involved, um, especially um, Neo Design Lab um, and RC Electronica and we're at the City University of Hong Kong. So thank you very much.